At the beginning of the film, we observe archival footage of a young couple. The lovers spend time on the island, swimming a lot, sunbathing, diving, and doing other interesting things. Sarah recalls that then everything seemed as carefree and beautiful as never before. Sitting in a bar, the girl shows this video to Jackson, with whom she experienced all these moments. Sarah is about to leave for work soon, but the guy doesn't want to go traveling with her. Jackson says he can't be happy away from the ocean. Going to the bar, the guy jokes about stealing a few things from Sarah in memory. Jackson wants to step away for a while and leaves the girl alone. Sarah, wanting to avoid a hard goodbye, puts the payment for the drinks on the table, puts on her rucksack, and leaves the bar, trying to hold back her tears. The returning Jackson looks at the empty table in disbelief. A year later, Sarah is working in London. She leaves the office and runs to a taxi. Sarah is on the phone with her friend who is about to have a wedding. She says that there is no need for Pascal doesn't have to wait for her at the airport as the bride has other important things to do. Soon, Sarah reaches the island of Mauritius. The girl rents a jeep and drives it past picturesque rocks, the ocean, and greenery. Sarah receives a call from an acquaintance from London, but she decides not to answer the phone and turns up the music. She reaches a farm where she is suddenly attacked by a dog. Sitting on a fence, Sarah is greeted by her friend. Solomon gives the friend her order. Several cases of excellent, strong rum for the wedding. Sarah pays off the man and leaves. Soon, the girl meets Pascal and her friends. To celebrate the impending wedding, the girls jump into the water from a waterfall. After that, Pascal takes the girl to a bar. Sarah longingly remembers how she used to live on this island and enjoy freedom. However, now she has to live in the metropolis, as she has a very important position. Pascal also likes the island, and she regrets a little that she decided to play the wedding on a neighboring island. However, it only takes a couple of hours to get there by ferry. Unexpectedly, the main character notices Jackson on the pier and tries to hide. Pascal tells her that the guy has a diving school here, and he is invited to the wedding. Sarah looks at her ex for a long time and is amazed at his beauty. Pascal kindly jocks of his friend. In the evening, the girl is nervous about going to the pre-wedding party. Sarah has the courage and decides to approach the guy to talk. Jackson tries to control himself and even makes a joke. However, he leaves immediately afterward. She is about to run after him. Pascal asks her to remember that the ferry leaves at 7.30. Sarah catches up with the guy and asks him to visit her. The ex-lovers drink together and feel comfortable. However, a quarrel soon begins. Jackson doesn't understand why the girl could not stay with him and also left him so suddenly. Sarah gets angry in response and replies that her career is important to her, not a life of endless holidays. She says she doesn't want to spoil Pascal's wedding with quarrels, and Jackson suggests that in that case, they don't talk. The quarrel turns into a kiss, and then something more. Morning comes. Upon waking up, Sarah quietly escapes from her boyfriend and runs to the hotel. Pascal informs her that they are leaving without her as the fairy can't wait any longer. The girl remembers her friend, Wyman. Sarah calls the man and learns that he is about to fly to a wedding in five minutes. She asks Wyman to wait for her as she will arrive soon. Sarah hopes that the plane will get to the right island even faster than the ferry. The girl meets Wyman and loads the plane with rum for the wedding. Suddenly, Jackson appears from behind. He also missed the ferry and called Wyman. The guy jokes that Sarah has escaped again, just like the old scheme. The three travelers pull the plane outside after refueling. Wiman informs the dispatcher of his departure and begins the maneuver. The girl tries to talk to Jackson through her headphones, but he resentfully takes them off and looks out the window. The plane is heading west. Wyman offers his friend to remember her youth and become his co-pilot. Sarah nervously says that she hasn't had practice in a long time, but still agrees to sit next to the man. The first thing Wyman reminds her of is that the altitude must not exceed 6,000 meters. The man takes his hands off the steering wheel to check how Sarah will take the courses and keep an eye on the horizon line. Suddenly, Wyman starts coughing and choking. Sarah realizes that the man is having a heart attack. The girl calls Jackson and asks him to give him water to take the heart pills. Wyman suddenly falls on the steering wheel, causing the plane to begin losing altitude quickly. Jackson pushes the man back and the screaming girl manages to control the plane just before it hits the water. The guy tries to resuscitate Wyman, but realizes that he has already passed away. Sarah cries while sitting at the steering wheel. She understands that the navigation systems are damaged, and she doesn't know where to go. Sarah tries to activate the autopilot system, but this also fails. 
Jackson suggests trying different frequencies to send a message about what happened to the dispatchers. However, the characters don't get a response immediately. Jackson checks the amount of fuel and says that they have about half a tank left. Sarah remembers that at the beginning of the trip, they were flying west. Jackson reminds her that they need to head back south first, as they're now off to the north. If this is not done, there's a risk of flying towards the ocean instead of the mainland. Sarah turns the plane around. She sees that a storm front has appeared on the west side. At that moment, the voice of the dispatcher is heard on the plane. The man informs that it is not necessary to fly south as there is not enough fuel for such a detour. Sarah needs to turn west and fly through the storm front to reach land. The dispatcher doesn't advise trying to land on water as it is a dangerous maneuver. Sarah gets nervous and starts flying straight into the storm. Lightning flashes very close to the plane. The girl panics and thinks they will die if they keep flying through. So Sarah decides to gain altitude to fly above the clouds. Jackson asks her not to do this as the dispatcher demanded not to change altitude. However, Sarah stands her ground. As she climbs above the clouds, she feels herself getting mountain sickness. Sarah loses consciousness and falls on the steering wheel, from which the plane flies downward. The girl recovers and tries to control the plane. However, nothing works, and the plane continues to fly, rocked down. Sarah manages to control the plane and avoid hitting the water. However, a new problem arises. The compass that was pointing the way is broken. Sarah understands that now they won't be able to know how to fly west. Luckily, Jackson has an idea. The guy magnetizes a needle and dips it into a cup of rum. In this way, Jackson learns where the north is and realizes that they are now flying south. Soon, Sarah manages to get the plane out of the storm cloud. They continue to head west but realize that this is only a postponement. Even if they find land, it will be difficult to land because Sarah has never done it before. She looks at the dashboard and realizes that they have only 5% fuel left, even though they had 35 before the storm. Sarah switches to the second tank, but the fuel level in it is dropping rapidly. Jackson guesses that it most likely has a leak. The guy builds a safety net of rope and is about to climb out of the plane to check and fix the tank. Miraculously, Jackson opens the panel and finds a leak in the fuel line. Using the tape, the guy seals the hole. However, trying to get back, Jackson accidentally falls and hangs from one arm. Securing the steering wheel with a seatbelt, Sarah comes to his aid. The girl gives Jackson her hand and he jumps back into the cabin. The boy complains of pain in his arm and Sarah pushes back the edge of his shirt. She realizes that Jackson suffered an open fracture during the maneuver. Sarah gives the guy first aid, treating the wound with rum and building a splint from hangers. The girl returns to the steering wheel and realizes that the fuel is still at a critical level. Sarah decides to lighten the plane by throwing out unnecessary items. The fishermen passing by below are amazed to see things falling from the sky. Sarah realizes that she has thrown all the items out. Jackson, however, looks at Wyman suggestively. Sarah feels immense pain, but still decides to get rid of her old friend. She sets Wyman down near the door, and after saying goodbye, she pushes him downstairs. The fuel level is holding at the same level, but it is too low. Sarah decides to refuel the plane with the rum she is supposed to be taking to the wedding. Miraculously, the girl manages to pour all five bottles into the tank without falling off the roof. Jackson says he saw land nearby. The island was very tiny, but the guy thinks landing on it is possible. Sarah trusts the guy and decides to turn around to fly to the island. She realizes that such a maneuver would take almost all their fuel. Sarah flies in the right direction and looks into the water. However, the right island does not appear. She begins to doubt Jackson's words. Fuel is down to 10%. Sarah doesn't understand why they still can't see the promised island. All she sees around her is vast ocean and she begins to panic. The fuel becomes even less and the plane begins to stall. The propeller stops, but the plane continues to glide for some time. Sarah apologizes to her boyfriend for leaving him a year ago and then dragging him into this plane story. Unexpectedly, Jackson notices an island nearby. Sarah rejoices and begins a gradual descent. The girl tries to hold on to the throbbing steering wheel and slowly planes towards a strip of land. Sarah realizes that she has descended too low and tries to climb to another altitude. However, the steering wheel does not respond to her movements. Eventually, the plane flips and sinks underwater. Sarah regains consciousness and reaches the surface. After catching her breath, she returns to the unconscious Jackson and helps him get out. Sarah gives the guy first aid and he comes to his senses. 
The island turns out to be just a sandbank. Realizing this, Sarah begins to panic. Soon the tide is coming and Jackson with the girl turns out to be in the water. Soon, because of the guy's wound, sharks appear in the water. Luckily, at this moment, a boat passes by. The fishermen pick up and rescue both Sarah and her injured companion. This is the end of the movie. Thank you all for watching this video to the end. Give this video a like. Write in the comments what you think about this movie and see you in new videos.